springtime. Ah, everything's so green. Like a hundred thousand passing tests. Just waiting to be turned red and green again during refactoring. So, what we're gonna do in this time, this episode is going to do test dependency injection. Dependency injection is like the heart of Magento 2. It's where everything gets wired up and almost anything can be changed using dependency injection configuration. So it's a pretty powerful thing to test. I hope you enjoyed. As always, please tell me what you think, reach out to me on Twitter, and see you again next time. Have fun. As a scenario for this kata, we will be configuring the object views to read, validate, and access data from a custom XML configuration file. In Magento 2, the tasks of reading, merging, transforming, and accessing configuration data each are handled by a separate interface. We can use custom implementations or use generic classes configured via DIXML. And for this kata, we will be doing exactly that. To keep this episode short and focused, this kata will only be about checking the DI configuration. We will create the full solution to use a custom config file in another mage to kata episode. The custom configuration file that I'm using is called unit conversion XML, um, but it doesn't matter yet for this episode. We will get back to this in the future. The mage to kata's module will be mage to kata di config and I've already prepared that by doing the module skeleton kata again. Let's get started. The first test name will be diconfig uh, configuration. It's kind of weird coming up with a good test name for this one because the module name already includes diconfig, but uh, okay. As always, I'll start with the test nothing test to see everything is set up right. And um, something's off. This should fail. Ah, I know. I misnamed it. The class name should be configuration test. Now it should pick it up. Yeah, very good. Okay. So, what's our first real test? Test config data virtual type. All right, what do we need? We need the object manager. Object manager get instance. And now we need to get the object manager configuration. And the easiest way to get that that I found is to use the shared pre-populated instance using get instead of create. To get the correct type, I like looking at the object manager's config property but we must not use the concrete class. We have to use the interface to get the shared instance we want. So let's import this as object manager config. I'd like a type hint here. Now this can actually be inlined. All right, what next? Um, we want to use a virtual type. Okay, the virtual type that we're looking for is the data access class. And we're already in the mage to kata di config namespace. Let's use a relative class name, model config data virtual. The virtual suffix is my personal convention for virtual types. Okay. Um, and the real type this should map to is Magento Framework Config Data Class. Now we can say this assert same, the expected type, and di config get instance type, the virtual type. So what we're doing is we're checking that the mapping of the virtual type to the expected type is correctly configured and this assertion should fail. 
and it does right get instance type is simply returning the same type that we are passing in as an argument and to make that pass we're going to have to add a di.xml file here and I like copying the class names so I can paste them into the configuration XML copy the existing class as a reference now let's add the virtual type node and the virtual type name will be this well within mage 2 carta di config and the real type is this okay i've got test cleanup disabled so i have to clear the sandbox directory and we run the test good all green the mapping works all green? Well, maybe we can do a bit of refactoring here. Let's take this here and extract it into getDIConfig. And this returns the object manager config. Inline this. And this local can go to. Okay, and this can be extracted into assert virtual type. I'll inline the expected type but I'll leave the type in a local variable because we will be using that again later. I like to have annotations for Scala types and let's move this up above the test. As well as this one. Everything still green? Good. Let's move on. For the next test, we want to configure the constructor arguments for this config data class. There are three, and this cache ID here is a string which cannot be resolved automatically by the object manager, so we have to configure that at least. Let's do this. Arguments is this get di config, get arguments for our virtual type. And now we can say if not is set arguments. Uh, let's do this. Argument name is cache ID. And that will be our index into the arguments array. This fail s printf. Um, no argument name configured for argument name and the type question why are we using this fail here instead of simply using assert array has key well i'm planning to extract this bit of code here together with a little bit more we are about to write into a custom assertion method and you might have noticed when we run PHP unit, it reports the number of assertions that were made. So by only calling one PHP unit core assert method in our custom assertion, we keep that count correct. I don't think it's really that important, but it's nice to pay attention to these kind of little details. Okay, let's rerun the test and it should fail. And yes, it does. What's more, it fails for the expected reason. So to make it pass, we'll have to configure a cache ID argument in the DIXML. Arguments name cache ID, XSI type is string. Oh, yeah, let's stop that. Since I've got test cleanup disabled, I'll have to clear the config cache first. And again. Okay, all green. Time to add some more logic to our assertion. Let's check the value. This assert same. So what do we expect? Um, let's add that up here. Expected mage to kata uh, unit map config. Assigning this to a variable will make it easier to extract the custom assertion later. Arguments, argument name, 
And since the argument in our DIXML is empty, this should fail. And it does. Good. So let's take the expected value and paste it over here. Clear the sandbox directory and we run the tests. Good, green again. Right, any changes? Yes. Let's take all of this and extract it into a method. And I want to move the expected argument to the top because that's the same signature structure that the core PHP unit assertions have. Expected value first. Fix the type hints. Eh, make that mixed. And um, let's move this method up. Good. And let's rerun the test to ensure everything's still green. Good. Okay. Now we can inline this, inline this. But let's still leave type a variable. Next. Next argument. Now let's go ahead and copy this here because our next check will be very similar. This time argument name is Let's have another look at that constructor of the config data. Now let's take care of reader. The reader's job is to return the processed XML from the merged config files. We can again use a virtual type of a generic class from the core. And um, we want the configuration value for reader to be an object of type model config data reader. Okay. Okay, so, um, well, at the moment this still should fail. We haven't configured a reader argument. Alright, I think the simplest way to make this pass is to duplicate this and change the name. Now we have configured reader, remove the sandbox directory, execute tests, Okay, all green. Now let's ensure we are using the XSI type object. So we need to add another check to our assertion. For object arguments, the array structure is a little bit different. For object, the configuration is a subarray with an instance key. And the failure message is uh, argument placeholder for placeholder is not XSI type object. And run those tests. Alright, it fails. Now let's change the type here in the configuration. And the configuration change means clearing the cache. Run the test again. All right, and now we can add the final check, which is uh, asserting that the argument value matches what we expect. This assert same, expected type, and that's the value for the instance key in the argument definition subarray. And we expect this to fail again. Right, and indeed it fails. The value is not as expected. So let's take this here and update the value to mage 2 kata di config and paste. And one more time, we need to clear the config XML cache, run the test, great, all green. So time to refactor. Let's take this here into assert di argument type and we'll move the expected type first again in the signature. This time all three arguments should be strings. Okay, alright. 
Let's move this up above the test. What else? We can inline the assertion call arguments again. Everything still green? I expect so. Good. So this should give us enough of an idea of the object manager config array structure to test any kind of argument configuration. Of course, we're not limited to strings and objects. It could be an array or any other kind of structure, but that's very similar to what we did so far. Right, and that brings us to the end of this kata. And as always, the final step is to remove all the code that we've written. Since I want to do this argument config kata again, I'll just remove the di XML and the di config test. As always, I'm eager to get feedback or hear your questions. So please leave a comment here under the video or on Twitter. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.